Hart. <laughs> when you play with Billy Hart, he's challenging you all the time. And there's a lot of uh, dialogue going on within that. And sometimes that gets even more intense between uh, har the harmonic approaches and the rhythmic approaches that happen between the soloists and the rhythms. <laughs> Hart's one of the definitely one of the masters of the drums right now, and um, the way Billy plays is so inspiring. Uh, he's a master accompanist, master soloist, and um, his spirit and energy that he brings to the band just brings out the best of me because he's always lifting everybody up in many, many ways. Well, is it difficult for you to listen to your music? Do you always hear the mistakes and the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, until, you know, until you, until, uh, you know, a long time afterwards. Because, you know, you try so hard, man. You try so hard. And especially, you know, when you finally get a chance to be with, with something that you always wanted to be with. You know, I, I didn't make Speak No Evil with Wayne Shorter or, you know, you know what I'm saying? Or, or uh, Cheryl with Charlie Parker, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But but you get it. But I'm doing this. Yeah. So 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 well, you've when, done when a lot. This, man. When, when this happens, you wanna, you know, you wanna, you don't get this many opportunities. Everybody has what they do best, and then they have other things. Nobody does everything perfect. Your job is to find what they do well that enhances that particular statement you're trying to make with those particular people in this situation. And I knew that this would be the case. For example, Billy is the right drummer for this situation because Billy's a storyteller. There are other great drummers out there. I mean, many, many great drummers. But they don't tell a story with Billy. No, Billy knows how to tell a novel. He knows the beginning, middle, and end. He does it with symbols, he does it with colors, he does it with dynamics, he does it with unpredictability. Always professional, always there, but he knows how to tell a story. Now, if you have three guys plus a piano player, all heavy solos get up, you better ask somebody to tell a story. Otherwise, you're into the jam session. It's about the rhythm section in this music. Um, you know, that's what it's about. You never say culture without saying Coy and Elvin. You don't say Mama without saying Tony Lynch. You don't say, you know, Louis Armstrong's or Earl Hines. I mean, it, those are the all star combinations. It's not just because they're famous. The reason they're famous is because they're so good and they're so experienced. So this is, a, this is this rhythm section. This is a rhythm section that collectively, probably on, you know, thousand plus recordings with everybody in the business over 40 plus years. <laughs> situation, not only as musicians, but as, but as uh, personalities, as people, and uh, that, that's a ref I think that's a reflection of not only uh, him, but us, and the concept of this, this particular ensemble, this musical experience. See the lyricism in that. I know. And just before what? Just before the meditation suite? Just before Ascension? That live date in Seattle? Yeah. yeah Man, yeah. that that, that uh, uh, what's the what's the uh, out of this world? Right. 
I, 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 I can't even get to the solos. I just play the melody over and over right, again. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? <laughs> that whole year, 1965. Whew. I know. Discovering things about my biggest inspiration, which is John Coltrane, and I'm, you know, you think after what 40 years, uh, I would know a little bit about him, but I'm still rediscovering not only more things about him, but more things about myself, and especially my playing, based on my, uh, you know, uh, knowledge of him and interest in him, stuff like that. So. Uh, a project like this is extraordinarily uh, important to me. You can get a, a, a five-year-old kid that can be, you know, creative. That, that's almost something natural or something. But the maturity, the musical maturity of these people, the knowledge they, they have, the wisdom they have in, in, in this music, it, uh, it humbles me.